Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today in the video, guys, we're going to be talking about the folding wing tips on the 777X. Why are they there? What's the reason they look like they do? Why doesn't other aircraft already use the technology? And is it likely to pop up on more aircraft going forward? Stay tuned. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, if you don't like maths and physics in school, but realize that you really need it for your future career, well then, Brilliant.org is for you. Five on the first of you who uses this link here below will get 20% off the annual fee. It's completely free to check it out, so do that. Right guys, uh, I'm sure that most of you have already seen the news coverage from Boeing during the last weeks. They have just rolled out their first static um, version of their 777-9X, okay? Um, the most kind of eye-popping part of the 777-X is the foldable wing tips, okay? And um, you might ask yourself, why are aircraft manufacturers like Boeing suddenly starting to have foldable wingtips? What's the reason for that? The 777 is not bigger than, for example, the Airbus 380 or the 747. It doesn't have a larger wingspan. So what's the reason for it? Well, in order to understand this, you really need to see what, where the aircraft manufacturers are going nowadays. Okay, You already can see it on the 787 and the Airbus 350. Okay, They are walking towards efficiency. The more, the, uh, the more efficiency uh, an aircraft manufacturer can squeeze out of their aircraft, the more likely it is to sell well. So you, the longer you can fly with an aircraft, the more passengers you can put onto it, the less fuel it's using, the more you are going to sell. And also, on top of that, you have what I was explaining in the episode about why the, the, um, the big jumbo jets are disappearing. If you haven't seen it, it's going to be a card up here that you can click on later on. Uh, you have the change of how the airline business is working. So more and more airlines are flying point to point rather than using the big hubs. And because of that, they're using secondary airports, which are smaller, has smaller taxiways. And we're going to get to why that's important in a second. So, there are very, very few ways that an aircraft manufacturer can make the aircraft, their existing aircraft, more effective. Okay? One of the ways they can still do that is by increasing the aspect ratio of their aircraft. And in short, what that means is that they need to make the wingspan wider, they need to make the wings thinner and, well, more area more lift out of the wings okay um, and that's great you can see that you can see how you know high aspect ratio aircraft works in for example um, gliders gliders is an excellent example or the uh, the, the the first solar driven aircraft to circumnavigate the globe the uh, solar impulse 2 is also high aspect ratio aircraft and the way the reason they look like that is because when you're supposed to fly far long you need the wings to be, be able to take out as much lift as possible uh, with as little drag as possible. That way you don't need to use so much engine power. Less engine power means less fuel burned. And this is what they're looking for. But of course it's going to make the aircraft extremely wide. And this is not a problem at all when we're at altitude. When we're up flying, it doesn't matter how big the aircraft is. But as soon as you get down on the ground, that's when the problem stops, uh, starts. Because the taxiways are built with a certain distance between each other and to the runway. Uh, so that means that huge aircraft, the aircraft of the likes of the 380 and the 747, can only use certain taxiways. All right? And on top of that, you have the gates. So the gates are also built with a specific aircraft size in mind. And if the wingtips or the wingspan becomes bigger than that, well then only certain uh, gates is going to be available. The same with hangars, maintenance and things like that. So the wingspan becomes really, really important. And especially for operators that are using secondary airport. So Boeing wanted to be able to come out and say to their existing 777 customers that 
this new, the 777-8X and 9X, are going to be able to fly into and use the existing infrastructure into the small airports that we're already using. Okay, and this is where the foldable wingtip comes in. So the, the new 777X with the wings extended has a wingspan of about 71 meters. And that brings us into the category of the Airbus 380 and the 747, category Foxtrot F. But by adding the foldable wingtips, it now brings the, uh, the, um, the um, size down to 65 meters, which brings it into category Echo. Okay, and that's the same category as the old 777 was. So here you see where we're going. All right, this is the reason behind this. But you might ask yourself, so if this is so good, why haven't the bigger aircraft like the 747 or the Airbus 380 already done the same thing? Well, first of all, the, um, the Airbus 380 has already kind of done that. They've added um, their um, the winglets, to it. Actually, the 380 would require a much bigger wingspan than it has, but uh, it has been decided among airports around the globe that the absolute maximum wingspan to be expected of any aircraft is going to be um, 80 meters. Anything on top of that is going to require some very, very special infrastructure. So they needed to keep within 80 meters and they did that by adding um, permanent um, winglets to it. But if you're going to be really efficient, then the raked Wingtips uh, are actually more efficient when you're flying long haul. The rake team wingtips is what you see on the 767, for example, and on the, uh, the Boeing 787 as well. So Boeing wanted to stay there. They didn't want to add winglets to, um, to the 777. Same thing with the 747, okay? So they, they, can't, they can't do this, basically. But the 777 could, uh, but it also comes with some other downsides as well. So. Anytime you add a movable part on an aircraft, you're going to add complexity. Complexity comes with maintenance costs because these foldable wingtips are going to have to be checked. Uh, and anytime you have something that moves, there's always a risk that that thing that's supposed to move is not moving. So you have a problem with it. Okay. And on top of that, the, the mechanism that is needed in order to raise the wingtips will add weight to the aircraft. And the, the parts of the wings that are being um, that are being folded will not be able to be used as wing tanks. We will not be able to fit any fuel on it. And when you, when you limit the amount of fuel that you can put into the wings, it also means that you're potentially limiting the range of the aircraft. So that's why air, aircraft manufacturers haven't been using this technology up until now. They haven't thought that the benefits upweighs the, uh, the downsides of it. The only aircraft at the moment that are using uh, permanent kind of foldable wings, they tend to be military aircraft. And the reason they're doing that is because you need to fit them into very small areas. So very small hangars, for example, or indeed aircraft carriers. Right, so from a pilot's point of view, um, what I can see with this um, is that whenever you have an extra part that needs to be extended before takeoff, it of course increases the risk of something being forgotten. Now I should say that uh, it's very likely that Boeing has built in some very comprehensive warning systems to make sure that the aircraft doesn't try to take off without the wingtips extended. Uh, on top of that, it will take about 20 seconds to extend the wing wingtips and it's very likely that those 20 seconds will be spent at the holding point because in order to be using all of these taxiways for the, uh, the smaller aircraft, they were going to have to be taxiing with the wingtips uh, up. So this will possibly delay the departure time a little bit, which might be a problem at larger airports like Los Angeles or New York or London Heathrow. But I'm guessing that this is something that would be fixed with the standard operating procedures within the airlines that are using it. So will we see this in other aircraft types going forward? Um, my answer to that is it's likely yes, uh, because once this aircraft technology is being tested out, then more aircraft manufacturers is going to want to use the higher aspect ratio in order to reduce the drag and increase the efficiency of the wings. So yeah, I'm guessing that um, this 12% of increased efficiency that comes with the 777X is going to be highly desirable by, for example, Airbus as well. So my guess is that, yes, in the future, we'll probably see more aircraft using this technology. 
that's all. That's all I had about the foldable wingtips, guys. If you have more questions along this and, or, and about other aircraft types, then write it in below. Let me know if you like this video. And as always, subscribe and highlight the notification bell. I want to say a final thank you to the sponsors of this video, which is brilliant.org. Now, if you are like me, when I was small, I was actually crying when I got homework in mathematics. I thought it was so boring. It really sucked. Okay, I would have loved to have a tool like brilliant.org that would have shown me how uh, mathematics and physics will be used in you know in normal life and to make it fun with some you know some nuts to crack some problem solving and to show me really how to do that so if you're like me and you are struggling a little bit with mathematics and physics then go down click the link below five on the first of you will get 20 percent off the annual fee but it's completely free to check it out have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and i'll see you next time Bye bye